Hello, everybody, and welcome to today's AutoForm Global webinar, how to account for accurate friction and lubrication data in sheet metal forming simulations. Um, we're very glad to welcome you in the second Triboform webinar that has been organized in the past. Um, just to share some um, quick technical information with everybody, all your microphones have been muted and I kindly ask you to stay muted throughout the webinar. Within the agenda, we have scheduled a questions and answer section right after the second part has been presented. So you have the chance to ask all your questions within uh, that part. Um, also, I ask you not to record the session. I will share with you information on how you can uh, access more information about today's um, topic um, also after the, the webinar. Um, now I would like to present to you today's uh, speakers. Um, the meeting or the webinar uh, will be um, kicked off by Zanaz Bremeni, a global project lead at uh, Tribal Form. She will also um, give you a glimpse on the agenda um, so you can uh, see again what's uh, happening today, followed by Johan Hall, technical product manager at um, Tribal Form. Uh, one one uh, major part will be uh, the live demo. Also, he will um, present to you conclusions and the key um, takeaways. So I uh, now would like to hand over to Zanas uh, to get us started for today. Thank you very much. Uh, good morning and good afternoon, everybody. Uh, welcome to the second global webinar of Tribal Form. Uh, thanks, Katarin, for the introduction. Uh, once more, my name is Sanaz Barahmani. I am a global project lead of Tribal Board. And today, together with uh, Johan, uh, we would like to present and demonstrate how to achieve a new level of simulation accuracy through a more realistic consideration of uh, tribological effects in the stamping simulations. So, uh, first, have a look at the agenda. So, during in this uh, presentation, uh, we will talk about the importance of friction and lubrication in stamping simulations, followed by the recent application cases uh, from several OEMs. And in the second part, uh, Johan uh, will uh, give you a live demonstration of a tribal form and auto form. And um, in total, this presentation uh, will take about 50 minutes. And as I, uh, as already Catherine mentioned, there will be some time for questions and uh, discussions. So uh, we will uh, start with the introduction. Looking into a stamping uh, and more specifically a stamping simulations, there are many factors which play an important role on the quality of the parts. Uh, these are mainly blank holder force, uh, die, and also sheet geometry. The parameters uh, to describe material properties, and also a stiffness of tool and press. But the last um, one, which is usually uh, not being considered uh, currently in industry, is tribology. And this is probably also not in your checklist uh, by default till now. Uh, and today we would like to say why is it important to also consider tribology in a stamping process and simulations. So uh, to answer to this question, we want to start with this motivational example. Here uh, you see an aluminum wood inner part uh, produced by deep drawing process. And this was the first ever aluminum project of Ford Autosan in Turkey. At the left, uh, you see the sheet metal forming simulation result, uh, which was not critical, uh, and uh, there was a green light to uh, go to tryout. Uh, however, as you can see on the right side, uh, the result of first press uh, trial showed a clear split in the part. So, uh, how is this possible? Um, as we know, uh, simulation results are not deviating that much from reality. 
and they are in most of the cases very accu accurate and uh, correlate well uh, with reality. So for this example, I can already tell you uh, that this has something to do with uh, tribology and uh, the way friction was considered in the forming simulation. Uh, in this specific case, a constant coefficient of friction was used and this is still done in the most of the sheet metal forming simulations performed in industry today. But in this case, you want to simulate a deep drawing process of a very complex aluminium part. And uh, in this type of situation, you need to get all things right in your simulation to have uh, accurate results. So uh, this also includes, of course, the frictional behavior. And uh, it is clear that for this specific part, constant friction was not adequate. Uh, so it is clear we need to do something else, and that is exactly the topic we want to talk about today. Tribology, friction, and lubrication in sheet metal forming processes. Uh, and we hope at the end of this pre uh, presentation, uh, we demonstrate um, how we can solve these issues uh, that uh, happens uh, nowadays. So, First, I would like to start with the question, what is friction and what influences it? So, it is very interesting to know that the problems of friction and wear were even concerned of the greatest minds of the 16th century scientists. There are notes from Leonardo da Vinci, which shows he was fully aware of friction and wear when considering rotating and sliding mechanisms. He stated already at that time that areas in contact have no effect on friction and if the load of an object is doubled, its friction will also be doubled. Leonardo, however, never officially published his thoughts and was therefore never recognized for his work. So, a very simple formula, as we know today, as Coulomb's law, uh, which is by using the coefficient of friction or mu, it is basically uh, uh, is a ratio between the frictional force and we mean by frictional force the force which is required to uh, move an object to the normal load. This uh, formula is reintroduced by Charles Coulomb in the 18th century and it is still used today to define friction um, for sheet metal working processes. Uh, and uh, of course, during forming process, this coefficient of friction is often assumed constant. However, from literature and experimental practice of the last uh, 100 years, it is well known that the friction coefficient is not a constant value during metal forming. Uh, and therefore, uh, it is very important to um, have a deeper look at it. So, when we talk about friction, uh, as I already mentioned, we usually talk about a coefficient of friction or mu. So uh, this is not a constant, it is well known by today, but depends on the process parameters uh, and the tribology system is much better actually to describe it rather than mu. This tribology system uh, depends on the sheet material, uh, two material, lubrication type, and process conditions in a stamping process. And if we have a closer look at uh, each of these factors, uh, for the sheet, uh, actually sheet material is very important. The friction conditions also depend on the, the coating applied to the sheet surface and uh, the surface roughness and finish. If you look at the tooling material, the friction conditions depend on the tooling material type, the surface finish, and also the surface roughness. The type of lubrication is also very important, together with its amount and also the distribution on the surface. And finally, the process conditions, uh, so the applied pressure or process forces, uh, the stroke rate, which determines a sliding velocity uh, of the sheet and also the interface temperature between the tool and sheet are quite important. 
So clearly, friction is a complex phenomenon that depends on many parameters and interdependencies. That is, if you change one of these parameters, the tribology system will change, as well leading to different frictional behavior. In addition, when uh, we are looking at the current trend, uh, there is an increasing variety of sheet materials, uh, coating, tooling materials, uh, lubrication types, and process setups available in the market, which of course substantially increases the amount of uh, possible combinations. And uh, indeed, all these dependencies should be considered in order to deliver an accurate description of friction and lubrication conditions in stamping simulations. So uh, the question is how to account for friction in forming simulations. Uh, well, uh, already in 16th century, Leonardo da Vinci invented a simple test method to measure the weight required to move a block of wood uh, across a horizontal surface. Uh, this principle is still used today to measure the coefficient of friction. Uh, between a variety of materials, uh, mainly packaging uh, materials, rubbers, uh, etc. Yeah. And nowadays, there are also automated machines are available. However, uh, there is one uh, yeah, big limitation, and that's the relatively low ranges of pressure and uh, sliding speeds can be obtained in these machines which makes basically this test method insufficient to measure the coefficient of friction uh, as input for metal forming simulations. Another way to measure friction is by using uh, so-called strip draw or rotational friction testers. And these machines are especially developed to measure friction under metal forming conditions and can be used as an input for forming simulations. The problem with this uh, method is though that a significant amount of experiments is required to obtain a proper uh, friction model and to capture all dependencies such as velocity and temperature effects. And uh, also the effect of tool roughness and lubrication amount could not easily be determined uh, as it needs even more testing. So, uh, a third way to determine the friction coefficient is by mathematical modeling. In this way, the true physical behavior of friction is accounted for by mathematical models. And dependent on the friction models used, a pressure, a strain, uh, velocity, and temperature dependent friction coefficient then can be obtained. And this could be done actually by a very limited number of tribological tests. And this is basically what Triboform software uh, provides. Triboform includes mathematical models to predict friction coefficients under different process settings. Among others, um, the influence of the actual tribology system, and uh, what we mean by actual tribology system is a combination of sheet material, lubrication, and the tool. Uh, the effects of normal loading on the friction coefficient. The influence of a sliding uh, and velocity on friction. Uh, the type of uh, lubrication, its amount, and also the temperature uh, on friction and the influence of plastic straining of the bulk material on frictions uh, are all considered. And all these results in a four-dimensional uh, friction model, uh, depending on pressure, strain, temperature, and velocity, which is all stored in a so-called triboform library. So, using the Triboform software, you can open and evaluate these Triboform libraries and visualize the tribology system, as you can see here in this uh, short video, uh, and of course the corresponding friction coefficients. So, uh, in the shown graph here, you see the evolution of friction as a function of pressure, which is on one of the axes, and uh, the velocity on the other uh, axis. And the, uh, the several uh, graphs basically shows the strain dependency. 
And what you can also clearly see that it is visible uh, that a friction coefficient is not a constant value. And if you look at the comparison, for example, in this case with a mu of 0 0.12, which usually represent aluminum material, uh, you can clearly see uh, the difference and the deviation. So coupling uh, this function model with a forming simulation gives us the possibility to predict friction between tools and sheet depending on local process conditions. So uh, let's have a look back to the motivational example, which I showed you at the very uh, beginning. Uh, it was found by Ford Autosum that by using a Triboform generic library together with Autoform, uh, now it is possible to achieve a 100% match between simulation and reality. As you can see, the split occurred in the same location now uh, as it was in the reality, or it was basically predicted in the same location as it occurred in reality. So, uh, of course, the question is still there. How uh, can Ford solve this problem? Because, of course, they want a green part, which I'm going uh, to show you uh, later. Because before that, I would like to show um, a couple of uh, industrial application cases. Uh, these are all uh, very recent and starting uh, by a recent case from Daimler on an aluminum front fender and uh, this belongs to a passenger car and uh, Daimler has presented this interesting project uh, last year in, at the IDDRG in uh, June um, and it was held in the Netherlands. The goal of this project was to evaluate both drawing and spring back uh, for an aluminum front fender uh, using different friction models. So uh, first have a look at the specification of tribology system. It was aluminum 6000 series uh, pressed with a drawing oil using cast iron tools. And at the tribal form, we generated a customized uh, library for Daimler based on the specification of their tribology system. And in addition, uh, Daimler was interested to compare tribal form friction model with uh, Coulomb, uh, in this case 0 0.12 for aluminum. And also they consider a more advanced but not a still complete pressure dependent friction model. And to generate this pressure dependent friction model, uh, Daimler measured experimentally uh, the coefficient of friction uh, using friction tester and used as an input for forming simulations. So it's a very nice comparison. Uh, let's have a look at the measured drawing values first, uh, but it is also worth mentioning that the tryout tools were designed by uh, making use of autoform and tribal form in this project. So uh, if we have a closer uh, look at the drawing in the circled area, uh, we can clearly see that in comparison with a uh, column, uh, there was too much restraining in the column simulation and a crack occurred in the part, as you can see, which was not expected as it did not happen in reality. Next, uh, let's have a look at the pressure dependent friction model, which shows an opposite behavior with uh, two lesser straining. Uh, so the part was not stretched adequately uh, and there was too uh, much drawing as uh, you can see in the result. And in the last part, you see the tribal form uh, model and using a realistic uh, friction model uh, as it was expected, there was a good match between tryout and simulation results in terms of drawing. Uh, and in the next uh, page, in this uh, slide, I would like to show you the uh, spring back prediction results. And as the pressure dependent model was not uh, adequately stretched, it is not included in these uh, results. Uh, what you can see in these images is that uh, comparing column and uh, tribal form, uh, you can see much more accurate uh, spring back prediction on the right side using the tribal form friction model. 
So in summary, uh, tribal form prediction model uh, can predict both a drawing and a springback very close to reality, while both uh, column and pressure dependent models were far off reality. Uh, it is also good to emphasize that this study is the first one which looked into a springback prediction in such a detail and also uh, perform a comparison uh, between different friction models, including the pressure-dependent friction model. Uh, the next one, it's a very interesting case uh, by Nissan. Uh, it is a, a first ever publicly available application case of tribal form in Japan. And Nissan is uh, already for quite a while, is an form customer. And in this project, they wanted to examine how the tribal form software might highlight surface defects that had not previously been detected in their sheet metal uh, forming simulations. So um, you can see here um, the results of the uh, tryout compared to the simulation using the constant uh, coefficient. And you can see in the red circle that there was a surface defect the defect which was missing in the uh, simulation and it only came to the light after a stamping. Uh, so to solve this problem, uh, Nissan used Autoform uh, together with Triboform to evaluate the panel surface quality during and after the forming process. And uh, as a result, uh, Nissan decided to carry out an evaluation project uh, with the intention to integrate tribal form into the simulation process uh, for uh, more parts if this project was successful. So as you can see in the right image, after uh, using a tribal form friction model, uh, it was possible to detect the surface uh, defects which had not been picked up uh, by the conventional simulation method using a constant coefficient of friction. And uh, successful detection of uh, this defect has increased the Nissan's simulation accuracy and also reduced the lead time uh, of such panels, which is of course the goal of each and every OEM. Um, and in the final one, uh, in my uh, very last slides, I would like to return back to the uh, Ford Autosans uh, case. Uh, because as I promised, uh, we didn't show how basically uh, they uh, were able to prevent cracks in reality. So we have already seen uh, that they could predict uh, the crack formation uh, using uh, autoform uh, uh, together with tribal form friction model. Uh, and what Ford further uh, did at that time was to varying different parameters uh, in their forming simulation to achieve a safe simulation. And very interestingly, uh, they found that by modifying the second rabbit uh, in the simulation, it is possible to achieve a green simulation. So in the next phase, uh, Ford verified this solution of uh, autoform, tribal form, uh, by the dye modification according to this solution, and as you can see in the right image, uh, the crack issues were solved. So this was a very promising project at Ford uh, to demonstrate the added advantage of using advanced friction models. So uh, this was my uh, last slide, and I would like to thank you for listening. And from now, uh, Johan uh, will show you the demonstration. Thank you, uh, Sonas. So first, I will share my screen. Okay, now I will share the presentation again. So also from my side, uh, good morning or good afternoon, everybody. Um, welcome to this uh, to this webinar. My name is Johan Hull, and I'm the technical product manager of Triboform. So within this part of the webinar, we will demonstrate how to apply the Triform software to a real industrial application case and how you can potentially optimize your forming process by a more realistic consideration of tribological effects. 
So to demonstrate the driver from software, we will again have a look at the application case of Ford Autosan, from which Sanas already showed in previous slides the benefits of using an advanced friction model to simulate tribological conditions. As shown by Sanas, uh, Ford Autosan solved the split issues by optimizing the location of the drawbits. But in this demonstration, we want to find out if split issues could also be solved by optimizing the tribological system. So for example, by chasing the tooling roughness uh, or by chasing the lubrication amount. So in the demonstration, we will have a look at three different aspects. So first we will look at the application of tribal form in combination with auto form. And for this purpose, I will open the auto form software and use one of the default friction files provided in auto form. In the second step, uh, we will have a look how to generate and export your own friction models and how to import friction files in AutoForm. And the main goal of this step is to find out if we can avoid splits uh, by optimizing the tribological system. In the final step, we will have a look how to process and use your own experimental friction data in tribal form and how to use these friction models in AutoForm. So we will start with the demonstration and I will for now close the presentation. So first we will look at the application of tribal form in combination with auto form. And for this purpose, we open the auto form software and we will use one of the default friction files provided in auto form. So the results you see now uh, are the results obtained when using a constant coefficient of friction of 0 0.12. And as discussed earlier, the critical areas that occur during the tryout phase are not properly predicted by the simulation. Because in reality, they found split issues in this area of the product. In fact, to ensure the quality of the forming simulation, Ford Autosan double-checked, among others, uh, the material thickness and properties, the blank size, press tonnage and the die spotting level. The only uncertainty left was the description of friction and tribological conditions during the forming process. An easy check to evaluate the effect of friction on part quality are the built-in tribal form friction models in auto form. So if we choose one of the default friction models, uh, in this case, a friction model to describe an aluminum 6000 series with a hot melt, uh, then we can directly rerun this simulation. So to do that, um, we go in auto form to the process line, to the press line, and then to the lubrication page. And here you see that for this specific si simulation, a uh, lubrication condition was set to mill oil and a friction coefficient of 0 0.12 was used. Well, to activate tribal form, we can now just drop down the lubrication condition and below you will find these TF friction Files. And these TF friction files, these are the tribal form default friction files which are provided with the AutoForm software. So we have aluminum grades, we have uh, steel grades, bake hardening grades, uh, and for this simulation, we want to go for the aluminum uh, 6000 with a hot melt. So we select that one, and then we get a summary of this specific friction model. We see that we can uh, change the lubrication amount, so we can change the lubrication amount from 0 0.5 to 3 gram per square meter. For now, we leave it here on 1 gram per square meter. Uh, we can activate direction-dependent friction, and I will come back later what direction-dependent friction means. Uh, we see an overview of the friction coefficients, so these are average values of the friction model in rolling direction and in transverse direction. So this has also to do with the direction dependent friction. Uh, and we see the summary of the tribology system. So this concerns an aluminium 6000 series with a roughness of one. Uh, lubrication group is hot melt. Tooling type is cast iron. And we have a tooling roughness of 0 0.6. So we can just directly rerun this simulation. So we go to the start page. And we can just, if we have the proper license, uh, start this simulation. So I will not rerun it now, uh, but we have a simulation file including results. 
So if we open these results, uh, then we can basically see the results that were also shown by SANAS. Uh, so by using already the default friction model of tribal form, uh, you can directly find the proper location of the crack, uh, which also occurred in reality. So there are two interesting things here to note. So the first one is that there is quite a discrepancy between uh, tribal form friction and Coulomb of 0 0.12, which means that this part is sensitive to friction. And if a part is sensitive to friction, uh, then we also see now that it really makes sense to use an advanced friction model to describe uh, tribological conditions. Another interesting point to mention is the location because we, in the Coulomb simulation, we found, let's say, yellow areas along the drawbit lines, but now with activating a tribal form, we find a location of the crack at a completely different location. So apparently, uh, also the location of splits or wrinkles uh, are dependent on the tribological conditions. So, in reality, uh, Ford solved the split issues by modifying the second draw bead. But in this demonstration, we want to find out if we can avoid these splits by optimizing the tribological system. So the friction model used in the current simulation is a default friction model generated for a tool roughness of 0 0.6 micrometer and a lubrication amount of one gram per square meter. And a roughness of 0 0.6 micrometer is a roughness value that we often see in practice. Uh, but by putting a little bit more effort in the polishing phase uh, of the dyes, this value might be reduced to a roughness of, let's say, 0.4. And also increasing the lubrication amount reduces friction and might have a positive effect on avoiding the split issues that we see here. So for this purpose, we will open the Triform Analyzer software and we will generate a new friction model, including a lower tooling roughness and a higher lubrication amount. So I open tribal form. If this is your first view on tribal form, um, then we see this large gray area here. There's where we're going to visualize the 3D service topographies and going to evaluate results. You see this ribbon uh, on top with all kinds of viewing options. And most importantly here at the left side, you see this, uh, this step with input, analysis, results, and export. And here we are going to define the tribology system we are interested in, um, and we are going to use it to evaluate results and finally export a new friction model to uh, Autoform. So the first step is to select or define the sheet material. So we go to sheet group, um, and when we drop down, we see different options. So we see steel from a brand name, we see aluminum default and we see steel default. Um, and all the options you will see in tribal form, they're actually coming from a so-called tribal form library. And the tribal form libraries are running behind the tribal form solver and they include all tribology systems and friction models that we will see uh, in tribal form. Tribal form is installed with a brand name library and the default libraries. So everybody will have these when you install tribal form. And you can also request so-called customized tribal form libraries, which are specifically designed uh, for your tribology system of interest. For now, we go for the aluminum type. We set to the 6000 series, and the supplier is set to default because it comes from a default library. The surface finish is EDT, and the roughness is set to one, and we leave it on one, and we press confirm. So what we now see at the right side is the surface topography that really corresponds to this material, so to a 6000 aluminium material. And you will also see that if you choose a different uh, sheet material, that also the surface topography will change. So for now, we continue. We select the lubricant. Well, we want to have this hot melt. And the lubrication amount is set by default on one gram per square meter. But now we want to increase it a little bit. So we set it to two gram per square meter. And later on, we will see what the effect is of this higher lubrication amount. When you confirm, then you see this blue layer appearing on top of the surface topography, which shows the level 
of the amount of lubricant that you have applied to the surface topography. So we continue and then we have to select the tooling material. So we select the cast iron, surface finish set to default and the roughness uh, is by default on 0 0.6, but we want to evaluate a lower surface roughness of 0 0.4. So we confirm and we uh, continue with the analysis phase. And in the analysis phase, you see uh, the bounds of pressure, strain, velocity, and temperature for which the uh, friction model holds for this specific tribology system. So the friction model which is provided by Triboform is a four-dimensional uh, friction model which is applicable for pressure up to 50 megapascal, a strain up to 40%, a velocity up to 300 millimeter per second, and a temperature in between 20 and 100 degrees Celsius. So we want to evaluate this system um, so the system or the friction model is now loaded from the Triform library and we continue. So first we will have a look at the 2D result plotting because we want to have a view on the friction coefficient. So we press 2D result plot and then friction coefficient as function of pressure. And if we do that, then we see this subtle line appearing here and this line represents the friction coefficient um, which you see at the y-axis and you see the pressure dependency with the pressure on the horizontal axis. This line corresponds to the tooling roughness that we have selected of 0 0.4 and the lubrication amount of 2 gram per square meter. Um, as mentioned, it's a four-dimensional friction model, so we still have our strain uh, dependency, temperature dependency and velocity dependency. And if you change these values, you will see that your friction coefficient will change as well. We also see the sliding direction over here. Um, and the sliding direction says something about the influence of your surface topography uh, on your sliding direction. So if you slide your sheet material in rolling direction, or if you, your material is slided in transverse direction, um, then depending on your surface topography, your friction conditions might change. So if we set this, for example, to zero to 90 degrees, then you already see that your friction coefficient is changing a little bit and that it decreases for if you start sliding in 90 degrees or in transverse direction. For EDT materials, this sliding direction has, uh, has a minor effect. When you look at, for example, mill finished, uh, materials, then the sliding direction becomes, uh, let's say, a more important parameter because for mill finish materials, you have a high, high directionality uh, in the surface topography. So this one holds for a tooling roughness of 0 0.4, but we can also compare it now with the default friction model that was used in the simulation, which was with a roughness of 0 0.4 which is actually this file. So we just open it and we want to use it for a comparison. And as a comparison, we also want to add, let's say a Coulomb friction model of 0 0.12. Press okay. And what you see now is the green line represents Coulomb 0 0.12. So that's just the fixed value of the friction coefficient. We see the red line, which corresponds to a tooling roughness of 0 0.6. And we see the blue line which corresponds to a tuna roughness of 0 0.4. So you can directly see two things. First of all, that the tooling roughness of 0 0.4 reduces friction. Uh, so your friction model in general will give you lower friction values compared to the tooling roughness of 0 0.6, which we use originally in the simulation of Ford. And what you also see is that the friction coefficient is not a constant value. So we see a clear pressure dependency. And also if we will play around with the different dependencies, you will also see that it has a temperature dependency, velocity dependency, and strain dependency. So it's not constant. So the next step is to use this friction model with the roughness of 0 0.4 in our auto form simulation. So we can just export this system uh, to a friction file, which we can use later on in auto form. 
So when we go back to out of form, then in out of form we have to do three things to use this friction model. Uh, first of all, you have to link this friction model that we have just generated to a lubrication file, making use of the lubrication file generator in outer form. After that, you can uh, link your lubrication file to a material card, and then you can use the material card in your simulation. And if you have done that properly, and you drop, drop down again the lubrication condition, then at the bottom, you will find this new friction model with a roughness of 0 0.4 that we have just generated. So we select that one. Um, we see the lubrication amount is set to one, but we wanted to use a lubrication amount of two. So we set it to two, activate direction dependency again. Um, and there we see that this holds for a tooling roughness of 0 0.4. So again, we start this simulation, start, we will not do it right now, uh, but if we have a look at the simulation results, which are these results, then uh, you can directly see the effect of this lower tool roughness uh, and higher lubrication amount. And what you can directly see is that you uh, that the split issues are disappeared. So by the reduction of friction, by the additional polishing step, and by adding an ad additional layer of lubricant, uh, you can avoid split issues as well. In the previous two simulations, we used triform friction models that are stored in so-called triform libraries. Uh, but if you have your own experimental data, so that is experimentally measured friction coefficients, you also have the possibility in triform uh, to use this data to generate new friction models. So imagine you have performed a series of experiments, you measure the friction coefficient for a range of pressures and velocities, and you want to generate a friction model based on this data. And in addition, you also have measured the roughness of the sheet and tool that was used during the execution of the experiments. So we will open Triboform again, uh, and build a customized Triboform library based on, uh, on experimental data. So we go back to Triboform, we close this one, and we now open the library creator. And actually by opening a library creator, we open a second workflow in Triboform, which allows us to uh, define our own tribology system and later on to read in experimental friction data. So we can start here by giving a name to our library. So we will just put there demo. And now we have to define again the sheet. So we follow the same procedure. We see the same uh, drop down options here. So we go again for an aluminium, but now different than the first workflow that we saw is that we can change the namings so we can build, let's say, our own tribology system. So we select again the 6000, but for example, this was a 6014, if you know the grade. Uh, supplier you can define, we leave it on default, so it's not, it's not an obligation to fill in or to change everything. It was a service finish EDT, and now we have to define a roughness value over here. And it's important to know that the roughness value you select here should match the roughness value of the sheet that was used during the experiments. Because later on we will define the experiments, so the experimentally determined friction coefficients, and the setup that you define here should match 100% uh, with this uh, experimental setup. So you either have, let's say, a roughness value measured by a line measurement, for example, or you have your own 3D uh, surface topography data. Uh, in, in that case, you can import 3D measurement data from a microscope. So in this case, we press import, and there we can open a rough measurement file. So we go here to experimental data, and we open the sheet aluminium. We open it, and now here in the middle screen, you see the rough measurement data which was a three by three millimeter uh, measurement. 
And here in the middle, you see the square box, which normally is around one by one millimeter, but it, you can change it to whatever you want. Uh, but in general, uh, one by one millimeter is enough for tribal form uh, to determine, let's say, the roughness value and the properties that are required uh, to generate a new friction model. So we just set it here to uh, the left corner. We want to cut out this trimming area. At the right side, you see a preview of the area that will be cut out of this measurement. And you also see an overview of the uh, roughness values. So we see that this measurement uh, or this cutout of one by one millimeter has a roughness value of 1.2. So we just confirm we want to use this uh, surface topography and here you see the 3D surface topography of the real 3D measurement. So we continue. Uh, we have to define the lubricant. It was a hot melt. Supplier and default can be set. We leave it to default. Amount is one. That's okay. We continue tooling. Again, we define the cast iron. Surface finish was, for example, polished. Tooling ID we set to default. And again, we have to define here a roughness of the tool. Uh, so, for example, if you have a line measurement, we can just put there the value of your line measurement, which was, for example, 0 0.4. Or again, you can read in a 3D surface topography if you have one. Um, again, here it's important that the roughness value that you provide here matches the roughness value of the tools that were used during the friction experiments. Because the tribology system should match, let's say, the setup of the experimental data. So we continue. Uh, and now different than the first workflow that we saw where you can read in a friction model from Trifon libraries, now we can define friction coefficients over here. So you can directly fill them in if you have the average values uh, for your setup. Or you can just open a file. That's what we will do. So we open here the friction data set small. We open it. And there we see that within this file, we have different experimental settings. So different pressures, 5, 10, 25 megapascals for different velocities and for a fixed a temperature of 20 degrees and we find the average uh, values of the friction coefficient. So uh, referring back to one of the first slides of SANAS, um, if you look at experimental friction data, then the more friction data you will have here, the better, let's say, the fit of the uh, new trial form friction model will be. For this, for now, we have this experimental data set and we want to use this data set in generating a new tribal form friction model. So we press analyze and now a new tribal form friction model will be generated at the background based on the provided experimental data. What tribal form does at the background is based on the input that was provided here. Tribal form will select a, a reference friction model. So this is still a four-dimensional friction model. And what happens in this step, so in the analysis step, is that this reference system, so this four-dimensional friction model, will be adapted based on your experimental data. So this means that you still have a four-dimensional friction model, but it's adapted towards the experimental data that it's provided here. This also means that although we do not have given any uh, change in temperature over here, so the temperature was constant during the measurements, you will still get a, a temperature dependent friction model in return because that dependency uh, is within this reference system that is used to make a new friction model. The friction model has been generated. So we'll have a look at the results. We go to the 2D result plotting, friction coefficient as function of pressure. And here we now see the blue line. This is our new trial form friction model based on the experimental data that was provided in the analysis step. So the dots you see here, these are the experimental data. Uh, the blue line is the new friction model, and you see that the friction model perfectly fits or goes through uh, the experimental data. You also see that if you change uh, the dots, so if we select these experimental results, we say that these experimental results holds for a velocity of 100 millimeter per second. 
And if we change, then we see that these experimental points hold for a velocity of 25 millimeters per second. And you still have a four dimensional friction model, so you can just change the velocity to any value you want or change the temperature to any value you want. So all dependencies are still in there. So next step is again to use this friction model in outer form. And for that purpose, we can just go to export and export it to outer form again. And reading in and out of form works the same as we have seen previously by the other friction model. One additional point I want to point out here is that you can also store it again as a triform library. So you can generate a new triform library uh, based on the settings that you have provided. Uh, and although you have provided experimental data only for one setting, so one roughness of the tool, one roughness of the sheet, and one lubrication amount, you will still get a full range of sheet roughnesses, lubrication amounts, and tooling roughnesses in return. So if we export this one, and the next time you open tribal form, then this new tribal form library will be imported together with all your other tribal form libraries. So this is what I wanted to show in the demonstration to the presentation. Put it on presentation mode. So within the demonstration, we have seen the direct application of default friction models in auto form and how to generate and export your own friction models uh, and how to process and use your own experimental friction data. And we have also seen that by changing or optimizing the tribology system, issues can be solved uh, that cannot be predicted beforehand by simplified friction models. So this brings us to the end of the presentation. Uh, what's left is the summary and key takeaways of today's webinar. So during the webinar, we have seen that uh, tribology plays an important role in sheet metal forming operations, and that's, that this role becomes increasingly important for large industrial parts. And using a constant coefficient of friction is not sufficient anymore to describe the complex tribological conditions and that a more advanced friction modeling approach is required. And these points are independent of the software code that is used. So in the second part, we've seen the Triform software. Um, we've seen that it's generally applicable by making use of these default brand name or customized libraries uh, or by generating custom build libraries. We've seen the extended possibilities for problem solving by optimizing the tribology system. And we have seen that it will also lead to increased or to an improvement of simulation accuracy in stamping simulations. Uh, not discussed in detail, but you can also perform out of form sigma variation studies and optimization studies by varying and optimizing physically based parameters uh, like lubrication type, uh, and sheet or tool surface properties. So that was it. Uh, for more information, please check the Triform website or Autoform website. And for other application cases, you can also have a look at formingworld.com. So we hope that you have enjoyed today's presentation and would, would like to thank you for participating in this webinar. And if you have any questions, please don't hesitate to ask. Thank you very much, Johan. Also, Zanas, thank you very much for your presentation. Uh, we support and also would like to encourage you to um, stay in contact with us. Uh, we would like to uh, keep in touch with you. So on the slide, you uh, can see the email addresses from Zanas and also from uh, Johan. If there might be a question that um, will, will uh, pop up later, um, also, uh, something that uh, Johan already mentioned uh, within his part is that we would like to encourage you to um, sign up to formingworld.com, um, um, the leading online platform for sheet metal forming and simulation, which is translated into both Japanese and Chinese. We have uh, collected already a great um, 
a great variety of uh, tribal form tribology related uh, blog posts if you just type in tribal form uh, in the search field they will all uh, pop up uh, there are application use cases uh, really highly interesting stuff um, also, uh, we have planned uh, a whole series of other upcoming uh, webinars for this year. Um, if you would like to um, get your hands on, on dates, on the registration links, uh, also sign up to uh, twoformingworld.com. As soon as new uh, webinar related blog posts are being uploaded, you will receive the notification in your mailbox. Of course, also other uh, sheet metal forming related posts. Um, I think this is a very uh, decent uh, way to, to stay in, in contact and also to stay informed. And um, yeah, thank you very much for your attendance. Uh, I already saw we have a couple of people who are returning participants, which, uh, which is great. And uh, hopefully we see you uh, in the upcoming webinars as well. Um, thank you very much from my side and have a nice day. Thank you. Very Thank much you. from our side as well. Bye bye. Bye. Thank you. Thank you.